Welcome to the dark forest Jackie and her pals will never bore us Shameless confessions about our obsession Will make us laugh and smile So let's explore the dark forest And dork down for a while Hi Rangers, it's me, Jackie Cation Welcome to the dork forest It's 2024. Let's do this. Here's the credits, of course. Mike Rickberg sang that song at the beginning, and he wrote that song, and he sang it with Sarah Cohen, his wife, and he will sing the Mexican hat dance at the end of the program. Also, Patrick Brady still putting this together, video, audio, all of it. He's amazing. So, and Vilmos doing JackieCationStore.com. Squarespace is doing the regular Jackie Cation page. And I'm thinking of moving the Dork Forest and DorkForest.com away from WordPress because it's driving me nuts. But those are the credits. But if you go to JackieCation.com, you can get Dork Forest merch. You can get my stand-up merch. You can get my stand-up CDs and DVDs, which you'd have to have uh, devices for those. Uh, you can also see videos and find out any number of things. I have another podcast called The Jackie and Lori Show, but The Dork Forest is the flagship 18th year. We're doing it, you guys. You can go to my Bandcamp or my YouTube for extra content. Please donate is what I'm saying. It's 2024, and I think we've been in this long enough. Why don't you guys, everybody send me 100 bucks? That's what I'd like you to do. You can PayPal me. You There's links all over the pages. You can Venmo me at Jackie Cation. You can find me at a stand-up show and uh, hand me a sweaty wad of 20s. Do something. But I love doing the show. I would love uh, to make some money is what I'd like to do. In other news, I'm sure there's more things that I should talk about, but I can't think of them. But let's listen to who's going to dork out about something because that's my favorite part. Thanks for listening, you guys. You're all great. Let's get into the show. Rangers of the Dork Forest, I am in my living room. Living room? Garage. I've chosen to live in my garage now. No, this is my garage. And uh, and it's the uh, the Dork Forest. You've chosen wisely. Because this week's guest is Matt Alano Martin, stand-up comic from Bloomington, Indiana, who is uh, a genuine delight and a decent human being. And uh, you're looking for a straight white guy to, uh, to book? You don't have to book a douchebag. You could book Matt Alano Martin. He's a, and he's very funny, so it could all work out for you. Welcome to the show. <laughs> I, I like in the list of credits that the, the I'm funny part is the least important, which I get. Honestly, it was top. I'll take it it yeah. was it was top billing, top billing. I would, if you weren't funny, I wouldn't have brought it up. But because you were funny and you happened to be yeah. uh, the sausage casing that you're wearing, uh, mm-hmm. I I was like. Sometimes people just need and want to book a straight white guy. And I'm like, I, I got no no problem with that. It'd be great if you mixed it up more. But if you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I don't think there's any shortage. But if there is ever a time in the future where there is a shortage of straight white guys, particularly with beards in comedy. Then, oh, my God. Uh, the you beard. Know. <laughs> yeah. Are you doing you, – um, I have to say that uh, what mostly is happening – with straight white guys that I don't want to be booked are the guys that are just uh, douchebags. Yes. Right. They're just un they're They have other problems just because a booker thinks that they were that guy when they were in their thirties, mm-hmm. they're like, but I want to book that guy. Cause that's the guy I would have been if I would have been funnier or been a comic Ooh. or been this. And you're like, then you would have been hard to hang out with as well, T.J. Yeah. Miller. Yes. <laughs> and uh, then you would have been someone I avoided. Walk And I walked out of green rooms, Jeff Ross. I can't. There's just like there's people I don't want to hang out with. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you. And, and I, so it's, it transcends all gender, I think, and and safety concerns. Uh, there sure. Is definitely, yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you. And as we always say when we're looking at booking people for Limestone Comedy Festival, it's like there's plenty of nice ones out there. There's That's, never, there's and not, that was my point. Yeah. Adelano Martin. Good one. Nice yeah. one. Go there's, with it. There's not a single comedian on the face of the planet that is so funny that it trumps, you know, crimes that they may have committed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. What just, is it? Even if he's on time, even if yeah. he's on time, doesn't he? That's not going to do it. If he's yeah. if he's reliable mm-hmm. and he's very funny. And he's a horrible person. Yeah, yeah. you gotta. It's gotta. It's gotta lean towards. That's not majority rule. Yeah, exactly. So, fair enough. <laughs> so um, obviously, we're, our our dorkdom this week is about spilling that tea. Our comedy <laughs> gossip. 
<laughs> We're only three minutes in. Are you kidding me? I spend most of this podcast talking about my random opinions. <laughs> Hi, Rangers. <laughs> you remember me. Anyway, Matt Alano Martin, by the way, uh, it's at Matt, M-A-T, just one mm-hmm. T, correct? Correct. Alano, A-L-A-N-O, Martin, M-A-R-T-I-N. And uh, if you go to his Instagram, is, it, is there a MattAlanoMartin.com? There is. It's, it's uh, got hyphens in there all over the place, though. So if you just Google my name, it's the easiest thing. Honestly, just Google go. me. Yeah. What I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to link you to his Instagram, and then you can find everything from there. You can go from there. You're going to be in Chattanooga, uh, April 19 and 20 of 2024. And uh, people should come out and see that if they want to see it. Yeah, I'm first time at the Comedy Catch. I'm very excited. I've always heard good things about that club, and I love Tennessee. Oh, so yeah, right. I don't I don't love some of the legislation in Tennessee, but the people of Tennessee, good people. That's the way. I don't have to like the situation. I have to like myself in that situation. Ooh, that's that's, uh, that's where I'm at. That's where yeah. I'm at with America. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I'm not that psyched, yeah, but I'm okay with how I'm performing. There you anyway, go. I'm right. I'm right. I'm, I am the village. I will rise around you, uh, Matt. Mm-hmm. You like a video game so much. I love a video game. That you wanted to talk about a specific video game. That's and that right. video game is a franchise, if I remember correctly. Yes, it is. It's Tetris, and we're going to go deep. It's got shapes. <laughs> it's got vertical drops. Did you hear that somebody won? I did. Tetris? I did see yeah. that. Yeah. That's that not weird? actually That's not actually my dorkdom. I, I wouldn't be surprised if someone actually could talk an hour about it. Tetris, but yeah. no, I am uh, obsessed with the video game series Fallout, uh, and I reached out to you because I've always wanted to do the podcast, and there was a TV show being made based on the video game series. I thought, Which oh, is this, hilarious. Is, this is a yeah. good uh, this is a good indicator. Is it more hilarious yeah. than them making a full-length feature film based on Battleship? I don't think so. <laughs> no, it's not any worse than making Pirates of the Caribbean, but uh, but it will continue to make me laugh. When when the media goes in that direction, it mm-hmm. always kind of makes me go, oh, okay, it could go in either, either direction. So Fallout, mm-hmm. how many are there now? Uh, well, there is about five that are uh, considered canon, and then there were like uh, some spinoffs. Uh, the okay. first two Fallout games were uh, role-playing, turn-based, uh, very low, you know, 8-bit graphic very slow but fun which, and interesting for, for which uh, platform i think for primarily for pc at the time but then i think they okay. did have it ported out to consoles as well i did not get on board until what's considered the modern era of fallout which is fallout 3 which is then okay. where in like you know the graphics are a little bit better and the gameplay is a, not turn-based it's it's you know it's, it's in a, real like time. an open world right it's an, it's an it's an open world and it's also it's Technically kind of a first person shooter, but the thing that really hooked me about it was uh, you did not have to be good at first person shooters to survive in this game. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) good to hear. Good to hear. Because I'm bad at those. Uh, All the Gears of War and Metal Gear Solid and all that kind of stuff. I was terrible at first person shooters. Uh, But this had a uh, device in it basically that would assist you in the first person shooting portion. But then you also had puzzle solving and exploration and the lore was so deep and it's just, it's just, it's, it's the best. It's the best video okay. game. Yeah. Yeah. And this one is 2008. Yes. Fallout 3. Fallout 3 is where it really starts to take off and is what's considered the modern era for the game. It's good. Uh, and then, um, cause I think we had that one for the PS3 or PS4. I've, 2008, probably PS3. Yeah. PS3. And yeah. And um, do you start in a fallout shelter? You do. So the 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 lore, the world that this all takes place in is that uh, it's after a nuclear apocalypse. China and America get into a long protracted 10 year long war over resources, essentially. Uh, and then that escalates. We were adorable to- in 2008. Nuclear, yeah, it wasn't just us. <laughs> yes, yeah, I know, and hard to believe America was kind of the good guy still in this version of the game. So then, there, then there's nuclear war happens, and there were enough uh, sort of fallout shelters. And so Fallout Three starts with you have lived your entire life in the shelter. Your dad is the doctor for that vault, that vault tech shelter, and then for some reason unbeknownst to you, he leaves in the middle of the night, and everybody starts going crazy, and so you leave to go after him. Because he was, was he the only doctor? He was, yeah, that might have been why they were going crazy. Like, hey, we might need you. <laughs> yeah. And so then you are thrust out into the wastelands uh, and you're trying to track down your father and you're exploring and f- discovering that there are people that have been surviving outside of the vaults this entire time, trying to remake civilization oh. or also having like roaming gangs of different 
factions that arise. And then, of course, there's super mutants and monsters and mutated creatures and all the kinds of good fun stuff that you want in a sci-fi post-apocalyptic world. Right. Yes, yeah. you do. Um, is there a scene in, because I remember, I think I watched Andy or my nephew play this. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I just threw a set of keys at a door because Gordy was uh, digging up <laughs> the thing I just planted. Oh, Please, no. oh, tiny yeah, dog, you, do not dig up my eggplant. If you need I put to, in half the grain. If you need to go save your eggplant, I can talk a little bit more about it. <laughs> oh, you can talk amongst yourself. Oh, yeah. But I didn't know that you'd be able to hear me throwing my keys at you, but you flinched. So uh, clearly, mm -hmm. uh, you heard. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, that was just, so. I thought you were trying to recreate the sound of the vault door opening, <laughs> you know, just. <laughs> that would be more production than this show has had in 18 years. Uh, I will say that, um, so they played this, there was a scene in it where someone, where a girl was, was against a, a wall and there were two tough guys giving yes. her guff. Mm -hmm. And that was in the, and, and TJ played it two different ways. The yes. first time. He played it. He didn't help her. And I gave him the stink eye. And then I, uh, and then he read something online, the walkthrough or something. And it mm. actually affects the rest of gameplay. It, it is. It's one of the things that makes us so, th the reason that Fallout 3 like hooked me so deeply was uh, that fe feature right there is, so you, you know, you have decision trees that pop up. There's certain things that happen and it's, it's done through dialogue. You choose how you react to a situation through dialogue. And then if you have, you know, it's kind of like a role-playing game where you can put a certain amount of points into different skill sets. You can be a very strong person, you can be a very smart person or whatever, or more balanced. Okay. If you're a very intelligent, very charismatic person, you have more options on the dialogue tree. And oh, okay. De this, depending on what you do in any situation, it does then alter the storyline. And that beca that feature becomes more and more advanced as the game's uh, sequels come out. Like Fallout 4 and 5. Fallout, yeah, more so, so New Vegas and four there's it's kind of weird it goes fallout three fallout new vegas fallout four then fallout 76 so like the it's kind of hard to follow if you're not totally in the game system uh, right. but yeah so that that ability to then replay the game particularly fallout four mastered it you, there's different factions you can team up with so i played fallout four probably like five times because i would wow. pick a different faction that i would team up with and all of them kind of had good points you know there was never yeah. anyone who was just like objectively like these are they're just all the way evil yeah uh, some were more altruistic some are more, maybe a little bit more self-preservation based but because you do that you then get wildly different experiences in playing the game you can then also replay the games as okay i played a really strong guy that likes to run up and punch people okay now i'm gonna yep. be a very sneaky sniper person you know mm -hmm. it just has the re the replayability of the game series was is one of the things that hooked me and and the storyline is fun like mm -hmm. they don't take it too seriously there's always like a weird dark sense of humor in all of the games. Oh, good. So even good. though it's apocalypse and, you know, like there's mutants and tons of death, you know, it, there's a bunch of funny kind of, I don't know, like almost sardonic-y kind of stuff in it. It's great. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Does mm -hmm. he find his dad in the 2008 one? Uh, if you, yes. And, and uh, yeah, it's been out since 2008. I don't think we're <laughs> spoiling much. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And your dad is voiced by Liam Neeson also in that game. Oh my and God. So that's was a, he taken? Uh, uh, yes. So. It, this is pre taken. So, like, <laughs> this is when he was, this is like, I think, uh, post Rob Roy pre taken. So, Liam would need a little bit of money. <laughs> like, right, right. He was in high spirits in 1990, oh 1989. Yeah. Oh my God. Is, wait, that's high spirits. Is that with Dan Aykroyd? No. Uh, no, close though. Okay. It is with uh, Steve Gutenberg or Judd Reinhold, who I, Judge Reinhold, who I get mixed up. Okay. All right. And uh, and then, but it's also with Peter O'Toole. Okay. Who also needed the money. Yes. But Steve Gutenberg and Morgan Fairchild and Daryl Hannah. I think I and do Liam remember this. Liam Neeson. Yeah. And uh, it's terrible. Uh, I saw it twenty six times because I worked at a movie theater in London, and okay. um, it was soothing after a while. Wait. So in London, London was dark. London, <laughs> London, England. You worked at a England, movie theater in London, yeah. England. Why? Yes, did you... Westchester. I was on an exchange program and I didn't do it well. Okay, you were in a like a, <laughs> a movie theater exchange program. <laughs> like, I was in a, a university and... exchange program and I was allowed to get a job. Oh, okay. And I didn't do it well at all. So okay. uh, mm. the two jobs I chose to get were the one at the youth hostel where I could drink, mm. and then I would help them serve breakfast and make beds, and then the movie theater where I could be hungover. And then uh, 
have free popcorn and work with weirdos. And then at nine o'clock go back to the youth hostel and drink Mm -hmm. and then wake up and work at the youth hostel and then go to the movie theater and then go back to the youth hostel. I spent three months doing this. This is, uh, did you ever go to class? It felt like what you, as a university, it it wasn't, it wasn't a work exchange. It was just a work exchange. Oh, okay. It's called BUNAC British university. Nanner nanner. I don't know what it was all stood for. (laughs) All I know is I was very drunk yeah. at Alano Martin. Okay. And um right. and I did not use it wisely. And I got to do stand up twice. Yeah. And it was dumb. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I do like your idea of, or your pitching the fact that maybe this is another instance of uh, the Mandela effect is some people saw High Spirits with Steve Gutenberg and some of them saw it with Judge Reinhold. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the idea. Yes, me too. I, I also like that idea. What, um, so, but Liam Neeson uh, yes. is plays the dad. He's the voice of the dad. And uh, so he's got a lot of gravitas, you know, mm-hmm. and you, what you discover is you discover the reason that he has left uh, is you find out that he actually uh, was outside of the vault and was an engineer that was working on a water water purification system with his uh, wife, your mother, uh, when she was pregnant with you and they went to the vault because it was unsafe to have a baby in the wasteland. And so you find out your whole life was a lie. Essentially you do track down your dad uh, basically right when you find him pretty much right after you find him, he gets killed. He sacrifices himself to stop the bad guys from getting the water purification system. And then it's a little bit more of a revenge tale slash finishing your father's work and getting this water, water purification system up and running for the people in the wasteland to, to try to help them, you know, um, start life anew. Here's the thing. He doesn't want a certain faction to get the water purification system, I assume, Mm -hmm. because then they will gouge people or charge or they will be the ones who will control the water. Yes, exactly. um, But here's the thing about a water purification. He's trying to stop stop Nestle from purchasing. He's he's trying to stop Nestle. But here's the thing about Nestle. Uh, There will always be uh cascadian farms or whatever like an, mm-hmm. like the once pandora's box is open mm-hmm. everyone will have the water purification system everyone will have the bomb yeah. yeah so it's so it's interesting in 2008 it was it was almost when they were starting to write video games like they cared right yeah like prior prior to that it was mm-hmm. it wasn't you know it was people wrote video games and they were like, no, it's fine. It would, yeah. you know, of, co- of course you're like, but if you put any sense of into this, story. you would you go, no way. Line. Yeah. Because, yeah. well, because they felt like, I think they thought that storyline made a game not replayable, you know, okay. like once you finish the story, then it's over. But if you write a good enough story and also with the technology to, to change up the way that you play it as you go through and, yeah. you know, and there's a, you know, Assassin's Creed has done this and like the, um, the Bioshock games are an amazing example of this too, where if you have a good enough story, people will not care. They're still going to love it, you know, and, um, uh, the God of War series, I think is like this too, particularly the, the new sort of reboot, the play PlayStation four and like new, okay. the new, new generation of God of War, the storylines are phenomenal. And, um, oh, that's great. Yeah. That's awesome. So yeah, this is at a time where it's, and you know, Fallout 3 was a massive, massive hit. It was a huge hit. Uh, it basically made that company Bethesda made, put them on the map. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and influence a ton of uh, games. Now, the thing that's interesting about the series is you, <laughs> Fallout series is a lot like Star Wars and the fact that no one hates Fallout more than Fallout fans. <laughs> okay. it's gone on long enough now that the, you can nitpick like the forums. People are just nitpicky about every little thing. They're like, they, why are there even still Fallout shelters? Yeah. It's Fallout <laughs> Six. Mm-hmm. Well, the, but as the, the game goes on, you're not following the same storyline. That's what's great about it. So in Fallout Three, you're set in Washington D.C., the capital wasteland. Um, that's, okay, that's where that one is set. Uh, the next one, New Vegas, is set in Nevada, and Las Vegas was largely untouched. It didn't suffer any direct hits and things. So like old Vegas is basically still standing. And so you have like a desert situation and you play a completely different character and it's happening, you know, 20 years down the line from the last game, but they just do this by like showing the way that um, different pockets of the U S like recovered and came back from this essentially is kind of how they do it. Yeah. Yeah. So when you leave, let's just do uh, let's just sort of go 
uh, game by game. In Fallout okay. 3, where mm-hmm. do you get the weapons? Oh, yes, Tyson, please go address whatever <laughs> your needs, needs are. Oh, he needs to go. get that, that eggplant. Uh, it's, uh, that's the other one. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so, but here's, the, here's, so my question is, mm-hmm. is where, do they get the weapons? Does he get the, his first weapons in the Fallout shelter? Yeah, so basically, and this is a great thing about the game too, is it, there's a, there's a very big, Part of the game is about looting where like you can literally oh, every fun. single every single desk that you come across, every single locker, you can pretty much for the most part open up and find things. And a lot of it just seems like scrap materials that you can either then sell for cat. They use bottle caps as as currency in this oh, game. So yeah. that's the game world. Um, but you also occasionally are like, oh, well, here's a shovel. I can hit somebody with a shovel. And oh, so yeah, your yeah. Fir- your first weapons tend to be that kind of stuff. Oh, um, just more and, clubs. And, yeah, yeah. And then you work your way up to like, you know, and maybe you you be, you know, you beat somebody up with your baseball bat and they have a gun. And so then you take their gun. So there's a kind of a natural progression of how you get the weapons in most of the games. Um, okay. you're, not just, you're not just handed a loadout like a, you know, like a uh, Gears of War, Modern Warfare. It's like. It is technically kind of like a first person shooting type game uh, as far as the way it's that the perspective. The, it's, First yeah, shooter? yeah, for the most okay. part. Yeah, you can change it to where you're looking over your shoulder, but it's very awkward to play that way. Um, yeah. At least I feel like that. But that's one of the things I did want to talk about. The thing that really hooked me, because if it was a standard like FPS, I probably would have not stayed in it very long because I'm bad at those. But it had mm-hmm. a system called VATS, which was stood for Vault Tech, which is a company inside the game, uh, assisted targeting system. And in Fallout 3, when you activate, when you activate VATS, it stops everything. And so then you can target what part of the person you want to shoot. And I'll show you a percentage of like oh. how likely you are to hit that part of their body. But it completely okay. freezes time. And so if you're being rushed, you can stop the monster rushing you. Yes. And, then, and target it. So yes, it, that's it, what it is. It's, yes. it's, it's the real time part of it that I don't enjoy. Exactly. Because I'm not good at it. Yes. Yeah. And so it made it way, way more playable for someone who isn't great at that type of video game. And they have since adjusted it so the vats doesn't completely stop time it just slows time down okay. and so they're still so it coming makes it towards a little you. bit harder it's yeah. a little bit harder but if you've played fallout 3 and you've played long enough now you kind of have a sense of okay i'm a little bit better at the controls and most people who play console games have played a first person shooter and right. don't need the thing yes first person shooters in 2008 there was doom you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> there, was, yeah. there was all the know. spinoffs of Doom. There was Wolfenstein. There was Quake. There was, you know, like yeah. all those types of things. Yeah. So I, I would say that that uh, new newer players now have totally had more experience with first person shooters than we did in 2008, for oh, sure. 100 percent. Like kids that are people that are, you know, grown up with modern consoles like, you know, you and I are about the same age. So we grew up. First of all, we didn't have consoles. And then when we did have them, it was like Atari. Right. And like it was such a, you know, so to go from that to we're like, we're like our grandparents who, you know, our great grandparents who like lived to see the invention of the automobile and then made it all the way up to like Mustangs and Corvettes and stuff, you know, <laughs> like we're like, oh. Right. The fact that my grandmother first saw a bicycle when she came to this country. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> it's like, it's like that. Yeah, yes, for sure. Exactly. So, yeah. uh, but that system basically made the game playable for me enough that then I could really get into it. And again, like I said, the lore is really great and you spend a lot of time just exploring and discovering the storyline by reading old computer monitors, finding notes, logs of things. So you re and they put so much care into that, uh, which is so smart too, because also that graphically and like power wise doesn't take much for a video game to have, you know? No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't cost them a lot of speed or, but it does. It it is one of the reasons why those video games take three years to make. Yes, Yes. But it does also add to the replayability. One hundred percent. There, I yeah. you know, I, I was doing a thing every time that a new Fallout game would would come out, I would go back to three and play each of the games again. I do have a, a full storyline playthrough <laughs> of each of the games to get ready for the new version. Right, seventy six right. is the last one that came out a couple of years ago. I was playing through Fallout three. I'd probably played this game. I mean, for twenty years now, you know, almost twenty years, mm-hmm. uh, and played it hundreds of times. And I found something in it that I'd never found before. Right. And it wasn't a new, you know, they stopped making DLC yeah. for it, you know, right. a long like time it's, ago. It, it's not like it was a patch. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it was just some p- corner of the, the map and a, a wandering character that you have to luck into finding who yeah. I happen to luck into finding. And that's, to me, is like the magic of that game and the that's entire amazing. game series. Now, yeah. they've completely ruined it with the latest one. <laughs> 
<laughs> as as someone who was married to the first three games, yes, uh, exactly. you would like to say that the last game is 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 garbage. No. They changed the formula. Here's what it is. The the Fallout 76 is the first one because all of the games were single player games well into a period of time where that just wasn't the norm anymore. You know, um, it, so like right, cause it, it, everything's over the Internet and everything's and over the Internet. Inter- yes. Massive multiplayer, whatever. Right. And so they made their first MMO, which is Fallout 76. And I was so excited because uh, I, I mean, I was just telling you before we started rolling that I'm actually going to London next week to go to my buddy's mm-hmm. wedding and my buddy whose wedding I'm going to. We're ma- we're both massive Fallout fans. That's, you know, one of the core things that bonded us in friendship was constantly texting each other, messaging each other about what we were doing in the video games. And then they released 76 where we could actually finally play together for the first right. time. And we were right, so right. stoked. And we've met a bunch of cool people online playing because the, the the Fallout community is very nice for the most part. Right. And that's right. one of the, the things that you see about it all the time online is like the, the nice thing about the MMO is it really showed like the type of like kind hearted nerds that play this game. Yeah, it, it doesn't have to be trash talk. And, yeah. And yeah. It's not that, and there's there's a whole system of basically always helping new. If you see players that have very low lev- levels, you know, yeah. the people are just walking up and handing like, here's a full set of armor that I made for you, because there's a crafting element and stuff like that. And so it's yeah. it's, it's 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 really beautiful and supportive, but the storyline has greatly suffered because they had made it an MMO and they're okay. constantly releasing, and it's just like play 20 hours this week to get this new costume. I don't really care about this new costume. Like I want right. story and I want, and so the storyline in 76 to me is very, very soft. It's very weak comparatively to the other ones. I just, w- I wish there was a way that we could make the old ones multiplayer, but you know, again, this comes back to my star Wars comparison where I'm really <laughs> <laughs> this thing that I absolutely really? love and I still play is all this... the time and I still play all the right. time, but I'm just like, the just Did you like, play the MMO. I do All because because okay, they it, are releasing. It's available. it's available. It's releasing, and it's one that I get to play with my buddy who lives in another country and run our headsets together. And we're, mm-hmm. you know, like most people, uh, I would say I, I saw somebody talk about this as, as far as it's specific to men, but I, I think that's a little gendered. But like for a lot of people, like this is a way that we have friendships as adults is right. the right. shared you interests can, of the video game yeah. and we're on our headset and we're, you know, it's not like when's the last time you just picked up a phone and talked to somebody for an hour and a half. Right. 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 Oh. And you can, and you end up, you don't just talk about the game. No, of course I mean, you talk about the, the game. Last and then thing you we're just, talking about. <laughs> right. right. You're both playing the game. We're both but playing like during, the game. And, yeah. Yeah. During lockdown, we would play tabletop games. Mm-hmm. Um, and there would be the tabletop game would be on the laptop and the zoom would be going. And we would just kind of, you know, hey, it's your turn. And uh, so how's yeah. how's your whatever? You know, yeah. how's your family? How's your job? What's it like being you? How tall are you? Whatever. <laughs> I, uh, can't wait to see your feet again. I, I, I really, knowing you, I feel like you at one point you did ask somebody, what's your, how's your whatever? <laughs> like, how's your whatever? <laughs> the classic Jackie question. How's your whatever? <laughs> a, well, because then they can pick. Then they exactly. can pick what they want to talk about. <laughs> They don't have to talk about it. Fill in the blank here with whatever you want to talk about. Exactly. (laughs) So, so if Fallout, if, if the Mm. original Fallout 3 was about, um, the sort of the quest to find his dad Mm -hmm. and, and all that and the water purification system, Mm -hmm. what was, what was DC about? What was Vegas about? Well, so that was the DC one. So the next one was New Vegas and it essentially was a revenge, uh, storyline because it starts off, you're not in a vault. You're someone who did grow up in the out outside world and oh, okay. uh, you're a courier and it, you basically you get killed in the very first sequence someone shoots you and leaves you for dead in a shallow grave oh. and and then a robot comes along and takes you out and basically gets you back together but you don't have any memory so it's kind of more of like a classic western revenge tale like i'm gonna go kill the man who killed me who, oh right right. <laughs> and, right but you didn't die but you didn't die and so okay. um that one was actually developed by a different company. It was not developed by Bethesda. And so they changed some of the mechanics, I think in a lot of like fun, interesting ways. Um, and it's still one of my favorite ones to play, but the storyline basically there is it starts off with a simple revenge plot, but then you find out as you go on, there's different factions that you can side with. Again, there's like sort of a, a new version of the U S government called the new California Republic. There is Mr. House. Who's the, 
guy who runs Vegas and with an army of robots, you know, he's the house. Does the house, the house always win? Well, it depends on how you play, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh but then there's also like these, there, I, this one does start to actually introduce people that are just objectively evil, which you can still side with. There's like a, a, oh, wow. a, a squad or a, an army called, uh, Caesar's Legion and they're based themselves off of the Romans and they, uh, have slaves and they crucify people and they're like, there's just no way to think, Oh, these are could oh be my some nuanced people that I should <laughs> maybe get with, you know, you know, well, let me just get to know him. Yeah. I think he likes dogs. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's good people on both sides. And, uh, oh, so, oh uh, but you can still team up with that team if you want and like, and be evil and everything, which was the first time you really had that full blown, Right. You know that, that. And, and Andy has a, a tabletop game that he's been working on uh, that he's going to publish in the next year or two uh, called Hero Instant. Mm -hmm. It's a heroes in an instant, essentially. It's mm -hmm. a you can it's a and like D and D, but you make a superhero, right? Okay. Character. Yeah. And I was I was talking to him a couple of months ago when he was talking about it, and I said, "Can you make a super villain?" He goes, "No, no, you can't. You can only be heroes." And the GM. Or the uh, the DM, whoever is running it, they make the bad guys that you fight. Yeah, that is all. You okay. are a hero. Okay, and I yeah. was like, okay. No, I'm with that. I like I, like I feel like if there's ever like a World War II type game and someone selects to be the Nazis, they should what should it should immediately brick their game system, right? <laughs> Just <laughs> and like send oh. somebody over social yeah, bees, exactly. social worker bees. Yeah, it's uh, yeah the uh, it's so funny because um. Yeah, the to be the to uh yeah, I forgot what I was gonna say. God dang it. Yeah. All right. Be good, everybody. Uh, be good. Be I also good. like the idea of instant heroes because it sounds like they're like they're just like powdered heroes that you pour into hot water and then That's like it. boom, All instant you, heroes. What do you what do you want to be? You wanna be Superman? You wanna be yeah. the Flash? You wanna be uh you wanna be Captain America? Mm -hmm. Uh I'm actually uh an HR psychic. I'm a okay. psychic who, uh, Mrs. Kravitz is my name and, and, uh, and I have, uh, psychic powers mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, I'm, I'm of great use to the team cause we can all just talk to each other cause I can connect people. Psionic. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I was gonna say, that's also really good for HR too. Like not much investigating. You just already know what the violations oh, I, were. Yeah. I know what the violation was and how you shouldn't, uh, he, the, she shouldn't have done that. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. So uh, Andy, by the way, did work on God of War two and three. That oh, that's was, great. Uh, those are the famous games that he worked. Yeah, on. everything and else was not famous. Was was he working on storyline and game design, or what was he doing? <laughs> Mostly cameras, he told me. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> He's part of the tech team, I think. Okay, oh, very cool. Well, he did a great job because they're great games. So mm -hmm. tell him, good job from me. Uh, so <laughs> yes. yeah, so in Vegas, so you play a different character. You're mm -hmm. outside. You're playing a totally you, different character. Uh, a robot has saved you. Mm -hmm. You have to dash off and find your killer. Mm -hmm. And then, but the game mechanics you said are slightly different. Well, it's the, the playability and everything is still the same, but they just added elements to it. And this is going really down the rabbit hole of nerdiness yes, here. But, um, you know, in the fallout three, if you were to repair your gun, you had to, uh, you had to have the exact same type of gun to scrap for yeah. parts. In New Vegas, what they allowed you to do is like everything was more realistic to the real world. And the fact that you could take things apart and like, okay, this one also has pins and gears and this amount of steel and this amount of wood in it. So you could scrap certain types of weapons or armor and then use the raw materials to then upgrade your gun or repair your gun or repair your armor. And so, so do, do, does all of Fallout have that sort of, you said it had a crafting angle to yes, it. Yes. Yeah. And it's only gotten more and more so as it's gone on. Yeah. So do you have to hide from the bad guys while you're crafting. Oh yeah, yeah. If someone kind of I mean, comes up and shoots you while you're on a crafting table, it's not good because you're yeah, that's, you're locked in. As a player, you're locked in, and all yeah. of a sudden you just you know your 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 controller is vibrating because someone's shooting you in the butt or whatever. Right, <laughs> and you're, so like, you're like, no, no, wait. Yeah, wait, I was, I was, I was just I was making I was a trying birdhouse. to build exactly this birdhouse. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for the perfect thing. Birdhouse is it. By the way, I am talking with Matt Alano Martin. It is M A T A L A N O Martin M A R T I. N and that's his Instagram and he's going to be in Chattanooga in a couple of weeks uh, and uh, he's a great comic and we're talking about Fallout the game Fallout, series the game series I uh, and because I know we we only have an hour so I do I want to make sure I get the other goodness oh, in there do. 
Yeah. So Fallout 4 is, I think, the most interesting of the game series. Now, again, chronologically, it goes Fallout 3, it goes New Vegas. Fallout 4 is Bethesda comes back into the picture. They take back the property. Um, Obsidian is the company that made New Vegas, and they've made some great games over the years, too. Obsidian has. Uh, but Fallout 4 is set in uh, Boston, essentially. Uh, it's okay. called the Commonwealth. And what's so amazing, these games do such a great job of recreating the environment that you're in. And this is no different than, you know, like a, a Grand Theft Auto or somebody else that does this. But because they're set in real world locations, it's just post apocalypse, you know, nuclear. And Boston was not hit directly. And so a lot of the buildings are still basically there. You can actually walk the Freedom Trail. And what oh, was wow. crazy, yeah, what was crazy was like maybe like, Five or six months after the game came out, Denise and I happened to go to Boston anyway. We already had a trip planned for Boston. And then I basically get, we walked the Freedom Trail and I'm walking through what I'm walking through in the game. This is very, very, right. very cool. You right, know? right, right. I've um, done that with, um, with, uh, with, there's driving games. There's that, that you, uh, Dr Cruising USA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You Cruising USA and you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> L.A. Noir. I don't know if you yeah. ever played oh, L.A. Yeah, Noir. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that is a fun thing when they really, really get it right, and that's one thing the Fallout series has done. That's seventy six particularly has nailed it because seventy six is set more rurally. It's set in West Virginia. Okay, and um, so uh, there are people that have sent pictures in. Like, uh, there's you know, there's like a little town you go into, like Havelshia. Um, right. And people have been like, by the way, I live 20 minutes from Havlesha, so I drove over and took pictures, and they're posting in, like, the forums. And it's like, oh, shit, they nailed it. Like, they right. brick for brick recreated this town. Um, That's but awesome. Fallout 4 is amazing because the storyline with that one is you are in a vault, and um, you kind of come to out of your, like, you're kind of cryo-sleeping, which is unusual for the vault okay. series. And someone basically you're there with your spouse and you can choose to be, you, you know, at the beginning of the game, you pick if you're going to be a man or a woman. And so, and then it flips it to however, because it's still very uh, heteronormative, but anyway, there you go. Uh, but <laughs> so, warning, yes. warning for those who don't, but maybe you could just play the game and uh, have a pretend moment. There you go. I, but I could be a boy, right? I could, could be, be a boy. boy yes, yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So at least for right now, you will see if like legislation gets passed that you have to play the gender. <laughs> All video games you have to play. Oh, that I was assigned at birth. Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to scan in your birth Snoopy. certificate. I was assigned to... <laughs> Snoopy. <laughs> so. um, but anyway, so someone basically these bandits break into the 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 vault and they steal your kid. They ki they murder your spouse and steal your kid. Oh. And then you get frozen again, and then you come out, and so now you're trying to track down your kid. And okay. um, how long has it been? Well, at first you don't think it's been that long, but then you discover it's been like uh, 70 years. So you do find <gasps> your, you do find your kid and he's an old man now. And he's the head of this thing called, uh, oh, what are they? What, uh, the Institute. Okay. And, and the Institute is basically making uh, synthetic humans Ooh. and they're like the super pro science, pro futuristic. And then there's, you know, uh, a couple of different factions that are, anti like that human uh like well like robots that look like ro basically more like um blade runner type oh okay sense. oh right, yeah, right like that um and so and then you have like uh you have like the freedom fighters that are trying to like do synth liberation and then you have like a paramilitary force that wants to wipe them out but i just that one has the most radically different shifting storyline depending on who you team up with and so oh, wow. it's great. It's great. And the, they, they take the crafting to a new level. You can now start to build like your little campsite areas with like more and more complex with buildings and, and things like that. And to me, it's like the one that really has so far been like the best one so far. So it's just. That's your Fallout 4 exciting. is your favorite one. Yes, probably. So far. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then 76 is the MMO. And right. looks good because, you know, we've got more technology. So the graphics are better. You know, it's a very. It's not yeah. as and they're dark still and doing dismal. it. They're yeah. still doing it, and they're releasing Where's new it set? content. It's set. That's the one that's set in West Virginia, so it's more rural, oh, right. mm -hmm. and it's also the earliest chrono chronologically in the the timeline of the game series because it's only like fifty six years after the bombs have dropped. Oh, as opposed to like two hundred years and things like that, like the other ones are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. So, uh, yeah. So the 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 world is a little bit different. It hasn't like these 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 massive groups of like paramilitary new governments have not risen up yet yep. it's much more like hard scrabble like small like 
Um, you know, people trying to be alive. Yes, and there's some yeah. that try to do that by being raiders and taking, you know, and then you still have monsters and stuff like that, which you get to hunt, which sure. is cool too, you know. But it's it's a great game series, and I am <laughs> hoping that I can stay alive until the next one goes out. <laughs> they're they're now looking at maybe 2030 was when Fallout Five will come out. Okay, so if 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 Fallout Three was in 2008, yeah. and right now we're doing 1776. Mm-hmm. Um, so that has been almost, it's been 16 years, Yeah, but they've done, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four games in 16 years, right? Yes. But they also, Bethesda also makes the Elden, Elder Scrolls like massively oh, it's popular. it's just blew up. Yeah. yeah. And so they're, ba- they're balancing back and forth between that and they just released a space one like called Starfield or something like that. And they, they, they also do other games too. And mm-hmm. so, it, which, you know, as a company, they have to understand that they can't put all of their, you know, eggs in this right. one property. But Elder, but, uh, yeah, Elder Scrolls is like but, it, if, if it's going to eat up teams yes. of, of game designers and stuff yes. like that. And they can hire. But, you know, Andy was saying that one of the reasons why he was psyched when THQ went under and he got his severance and he got to go uh, uh, independent, right? Mm-hmm. Was because it was the 70 to 90 hour day weeks yeah, yeah. were killing him. And yeah. he was like, no, I will not. I will not do it. I am 40. Leave me alone. And uh, I was like, well, good for you. And uh, will this affect our income? No. <laughs> and uh, so, but uh, yeah, it was, um, yeah, it's really, it, it's for the best, I think. So what are you using? So you're, are you still playing on PC? Uh, no, I, I've never played on PC. I've always played on console. So I've actually Which not one? ever played uh, PlayStation. I've always been a PlayStation person. Okay. Uh, basically because I, I had, you know, gr- I'd grown up, you know, uh, my brother and I had a the very first very basic Nintendo which my mom sure. bought us as a I'm sorry that me and your dad are getting divorced gift. That's like we got <laughs> my cousins had an Atari and we could never get one because we couldn't afford it. And right. then my mom literally felt so guilty about leaving my dad that she bought us a Nintendo. And we we're and like, then walked out the door and exactly. you never saw her again. No, and we yeah. were like, this is better. This is way better. So, <laughs> right. like, I'd rather do this than watch you fight. Is well, that I, no, okay? I, I'd rather do this. I'd rather do this than be around my dad. So he's for sure. Oh. <laughs> so, so oh, oh, so she took you with her. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, good. No, yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. she yeah. might have just left. <laughs> Said, here, boy, here's boy. a, here's a, here's a present. Here's your parting gift. <laughs> uh, right, your parting gift. I'll see you in twelve years. No, you seem no. nice. <laughs> yeah, if you if you actually save the princess in Mar- Super Mario Brothers, then I'll come back. <laughs> I'll come back. What you have to do? <laughs> you, have to, um, you have to find the oh. secret level of Metroid, and then I'll come back. <laughs> But no, uh, so I didn't, I, you know, and then I didn't have video games. I went to went away to college and I was playing in bands and skateboarding and stuff like that. And so I'd really given up on video games. And then I randomly at a party, somebody had the very first PlayStation and they had Tony Hawk Pro Skater and I had grown up Ooh. skateboarding. And I played at this part. I sat down and like, oh, I'll try it. And then that's all I did at that party is I just played yeah. the video game. And I went up the next day and bought a PlayStation Wow. And then that Tony Hawk game was the only game that I had forever until Fallout came out. And the same thing, I randomly happened to be with somebody else and they had it. And like we were traveling together. It was one of the bands that I used to tour manage. They had a PlayStation and a little TV in the van. Right. And th- they had this Fallout 3. And so I was like, I'm bored. We got a long drive. It's not my turn to drive. I'll play it. And then it was like literally I was playing it for about 40 minutes. I was like, oh, this is the shit. This is right. the coolest right, thing right. ever. So, That's so cool. Yeah. What... um. Yeah, I have played a little bit of many different video games because mm-hmm. every time I would go on a uh, to go perform for the troops, mm-hmm. Andy would go to PlayStation and his or and and people who worked at Xbox uh, and say, "Jackie's going to go perform for the troops. Can you give me some free games to give to the troops and don't make them lame?" Yeah, and so we got um, like that brand new Spider Man game for PS4. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that was five years ago, right? Because uh, it was pre-COVID. Pre- yeah, but it's yeah, still amazing. It's still amazing. Yeah, it's still amazing. And I've never, I've never been able to beat the level one. Yeah. Because here's here's my thing about video games, and I've said it before. I mean, everyone is. I play uprights. Mm-hmm. I can do uh, my favorite upright right now is actually Hydro Thunder Four. I think, and it's a boat racing game. Mm -hmm. I think I played that one. (laughs) And and it's got your basic rules. If there's a waterfall, that's a tunnel. That's a tunnel, my friends. Something's hiding behind that. Yeah. Anyway, um, but, 
And then, um, and then I play a, a couple of games on my phone. Right. Mm -hmm. And, but we have these systems. Like I, during lockdown, I played animal crossing and I have a switch. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just, I, uh, I just know that if I, st we only have, we have the one TV, so I could play on the, on the, on the handheld, the switch, mm -hmm. but I also know that I might want to read a book or right. go do stand-up comedy. That's the reason I never got a switch or the PlayStation version it was called a PSP and yeah. they had versions of Fallout and, uh, and Tony Hawk and like, you know, oh, wow. and I've, I've since gotten into like games a little bit. I don't have, I'm not super into it, but I did mention Bioshock. Bioshock is another one of my favorites okay. as far as like storyline, I think is just a really incredible. Do you bring the system with you on the road? No, no. I, no? that's the thing is like Too much. the same reason yeah. I don't, the same reason I don't have a, didn't buy a portable one is like, I don't want to be that into it. Like, right. Cause you, know, you, you want to do many things in life. Right. Exactly. Like I already spend two hours a day yes. playing whatever game, Stop texting me. Uh, so uh, the uh, yeah, like yeah. So it's it, best if I don't turn it on. Yeah, if I had a Nintendo Switch, then I wouldn't put in the eight to nine hours a day on Marvel Snap that I do on my phone. Ex so my Marvel Puzzle Quest. Oh, okay. Yeah. I tried Snap, and I was like, no, I could either restart with Snap, which is awesome. It looked mm -hmm. awesome, but Marvel Puzzle Quest is super fun too. So yes. I like how deep into the boxes they go. Yeah, Snap is. It's Pokemon essentially. It's like or Magic. It's like a card, you know, my cards against your cards kind of game. Right. But it's it's oh, highly a deck builder. Sure. It's a deck builder, yeah. and you can have, you have multiple different types of decks, and it's quick play. So um, you were talking about like uh, again, on, like not being able to beat the first level of Spider Man. I I profoundly believe this that yeah, every video game should have an easier than easy setting, where if you cannot get past a level after like ten tries. It will then bring up a thing of like, do you want to just go move forward with the story? Because if it's a story based game, like yeah. because there's been so many games I haven't been able to experience like Last of Us. Everybody loves Last of Us. There is yep. there's pretty early on, maybe like, I don't know, 30 minutes into gameplay. There is a fight sequence like a thing. I just can't sneak past these guys. I can't win when I fight them. And so I'll never know how that story ends. Right. <laughs> because right. it's like, well, now I just don't even want to try. And even yep. looking up online, like, oh, this is how you do it. It's not like, oh, I didn't realize I had to do this, this, and this. It's just like, this is a, this is one of the things I think is good about Fallout is it does balance all these different types of gameplay very well. Um, Cause even if you play it without using that, the first person shooting on, it's pretty good. Um, okay. But like last of us and like the uncharted series, okay. they're not, re you're not really supposed to give in a lot of gunfights in those games. Okay. But, but it makes you get in them sometimes. It's, they're more about exploration and sneaking and stuff like that. Yeah. But they make you do it a couple of times and then you, it's terrible. The mechanics are terrible. Like trying oh, to right. fight. So they didn't put the, yeah. yeah. It's like, then you shouldn't have made this a, it has to happen this way. You right. know? I remember the I I played Prince of Persia, mm -hmm. uh, which was entirely acrobatics. Yes, and it was entirely timing. being able to. It was all timing. Uh, the The only thing I can compare it to to somebody over fifty would be an upright video game called Dragon's Lair. Oh. Uh, Dragon's Lair was the first laser disc and possibly the last laser disc video game, and it was all memorization, and you had to time it so that you were hitting the joystick in the right sequence at the right with the right pauses yeah. and that's what prince of persia was but you, it was all handheld of course because mm -hmm. you have you have that controller and um and have you i guess what would you think this is completely blowing off whatever theme i was going on to ask you do you think that there will be a, a vr version I, you know, like I how there, cool would that be? I think there, of? I think there was one. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think there was a VR version of Fallout. Uh, because I, I, I'm pretty sure that there was. I want to Google it real quick. Um, I don't know how interested I am in that because I don't know. I've I've tried out some VR goggle things and it's cool. You know, yeah. it's definitely interesting, but it's like it's not. I, when I play video games, like it's the same reason why I want to be able to skip forward to the next section of the story and play that level. Yeah. It's like, I'm not trying to prove something to myself or my, you know, like I'm not trying to make my dad proud, you know, <laughs> like look what I did on this video. It's like, I don't, I just want to experience a storyline. And so the same thing with like the, a, a virtual, like being inside the world. I don't even know if I need that. I'm okay. Being separate from the world on my couch. Okay. Oh, fair <laughs> like enough. Watching it. Um, and, you know, 
But what if there was a VR program where you could play catch with your dad? <laughs> what about that? What if it healed everything? You know, um, uh, I've, I've heard the technicians have tried and they just can't get it right. It just doesn't feel <laughs> realistic. They did. The last time I visited my dad, we, he wanted to go to this Goodwill and there was a football sitting there. And I said, Dad, can we play catch for a second? Because I think it'll heal something. And he was like, what? And I said, I threw him the football. He's 86. <laughs> and he caught it. And then he threw it back to me. And I was like, see, did that hurt? No. Look, no. I'm all better now. <laughs> and, uh, uh, <laughs> I just Googled. There is a v- VR version, and it's of Fallout 4. They made a VR version of Fallout 4. Which you said was kind of well, the best one. It's it's my personal favorite. The, I mean, the, it's hard to beat the, thir- the Fallout 3. Fallout, there's there's some kind of weird magic there about Fallout There could be no 3. Empire without right, Star exactly. Wars. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But so, um, yeah, I do think that four, if I had to rank them four, would probably be my favorite, which is not not the usual ranking, I don't think, by most people. But for me, it's great. So uh, I'm still not going to do it. I'm not going to buy a headset. I'm not going <laughs> to. I know that you were. But you don't have $3,500 to buy the new Apple headset? I do not. I do uh, not. Oddly enough. Have you seen and the thing where people are wearing those in the front row of comedy shows and stuff? No. Yeah. What? Yeah. There was somebody. I saw a reel of somebody. It was, you know, it was a, they were was doing it Mike work. Drucker? I can't remember. Uh, he but, did a dork forest about VR and how much he freaking loves it. So, <laughs> well, no, it was there was someone in the front row that had it. And like, so the comic's like, what are you doing? And then the guy's like, I can see, he's like, I can see you. He's like, I'm, you know, it's like, I'm watching the show and everything. I'm not watching something else. And and so the comic was just like, oh, can I just, can I just see it? Can I just see what it looks like? And so he gets the guy and then the comic just runs off stage real quick, like as a joke. Like, yeah. ah, I've got your $4,000 headband. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could remember who it was, but it was just some random reel on Instagram. But right, anyway, right. Uh, Rangers and my friend Jackie, this, uh, I yes. love Fallout. And then they made a TV show about it that's coming out on Amazon Prime. Right, starring... right. Did you see the uh, Did you see the trailer for yes, it? Yes, I did. Of course. What are you talking about? Yes, yeah, of course. I got a notification. Many times, many yes, times. I've watched it several times and I'm very excited about it because I think the Amazon Prime shows in general are very good. Um, yeah. I, I love their version of Good Omens. Uh, like, I feel like. Reacher. Yeah, Reacher. I, they stuck not, the landing on Jack yeah. Reacher. <laughs> Now, see, I was led to believe that Jack Reacher was four foot seven because I grew up on the Tom Cruise <laughs> Reacher. <laughs> oh, my God. The fury of everyone who's ever read a Reacher novel right now. <laughs> They're so psyched because the guy who plays the Reacher, mm-hmm. he has always been a big guy, but he's bulked up and everything and become much taller. I have no idea what he did, but uh, whatever it was, but he's a gorilla. (laughs) The dude is a silverback gorilla in uh, a t-shirt and a pair of jeans. And he owns an ATM machine. Sometimes a t-shirt. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Just a, well, and he, he was on one of the talk shows that my mom-in-law was watching and he ripped, he, there's a scene in the first season where they zip tie him. Mm Mm-hmm. And he breaks the zip ties Mm -hmm. and he did it on the TV. He did it on the game show too. He was like, or the talk show. He was like, oh yeah, that's, I can actually do that. And, um, and then he did it. He can break zip ties. Yeah. Oh my God. I did see a great uh, critique of the Reacher, that series. It's like, it's like Reacher is a a series about a man who solves all of his problem by simply being larger than everyone else. (laughs) Right. No no matter what the problem is, it's solved by the fact that he is much bigger. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right. And I mean, what I, I think the real premise of the of the entire show is, wouldn't it be great if someone who had this kind of power wasn't horrible? Yay. Yeah. Yeah. And would use his powers for good. And he uh, he's he's it's just, it's just a Western, right? Like he comes to town. It's, it's Kung Fu, right? Basically, he goes Kung from town Fu, to town. Yeah. It's the Hulk. Mm-hmm. It's all of the things. I would where Poker face, highway to heaven. Mm-hmm. Like it's the thing where they come to town and and like he'll see something and then he'll just pick somebody up and either break them in half and literally kill them. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, and I've read probably a half a dozen Reacher novels because they're perfect for the road, by the way. Mm-hmm. And what my mother-in-law, my uh Chris's wife, who has pa- since passed, mm-hmm. she turned me on to them. <laughs> and I'm like Okay. And um I will say that uh it is it is ridiculous. Yeah. So uh, but here's my question. Which mm-hmm. plot of Fallout are they doing for the Amazon Prime? They wrote a new one 
Uh, and Todd Todd Howard is like the main guy at Bethesda. He's he's the George Lucas to the Fallout fans as far as like loving slash deriding him. Like there really mm-hmm. is that same sort of relationship. Um, What's his name? His name's Todd Howard, and he's the CEO of uh, Bethesda. I believe that's his name. He's the main. He's like the main director of the games, right? Of, that they put out. He's like yeah. make sure he's like the showrunner for all the games essentially. Um, and so he has not revealed much, but he's like. It's a brand new storyline. They're not taking it's it's set in a new location, so they're not recreating anything from the games. But he's okay. also said it's not going to build much on the lore of the games. Like it's going to be more of like it's a standalone. Like it's in the world. Oh, it'll reinvent itself just yeah. in that world. Yeah, okay. and they're they're going to be some of the like we already see in the trailer that the Brotherhood of Steel, which is like a the military ish kind of like the new military uh, for the U.S. government essentially, um, they they show up in the trailer. And it, it does follow a like vault dweller who's leaving the vault and experiencing. So you get that same experience that you get from Fallout Three, particularly, but okay. also from Four as well, where they've they've lived in this very safe environment, of yeah. small small community, very safe rules oriented environment, and then they're into the wild wild west, literally. And yeah. so yeah, but the, yeah, so the new the TV show set in LA, which has never been done. Well, it was done in the very first uh, Fallout One game was set in the remains of Los Angeles, but this is taking its own spin on it. So, and do you think that it uh, is it set uh, fifty years or it's set two hundred years? Does it kind I of imply? Don't know. With the, as much as they show the, how developed the Brotherhood of Steel is in this, I'm going to say that it's closer. It's on the more like a hundred to two hundred years after the bombs have dropped. So, okay, yeah. so so it might be in the same time ish frame as yes. Fallout Three. Yeah, as the as so. the main timeline. Yeah, seventy six is sort of an outlier in the fact of how early it is. Yeah. Um and so which again they did that because it's an MMO and not storyline based as much, and so they did they didn't want you getting in and mucking up the storyline too much with, you know, right a, a, millions of people around the world all playing at the same time and or whatever, you know. Right, and you're just um, like, well, no, the Brotherhood of Steel has to exist. Yeah. These things, these are different. They're organizations, right? So mm-hmm. the Brotherhood of Steel is some sort of mercenary group that is They're more like the they're more like uh the US military, essentially. They're oh. they're, they're more an author- they're an authoritarian military. And then there's also the Enclave, which is uh the uh the sort of insidious evil like uh people from the the bureaucrats, the high ups in the US government that survived. And okay. that you find out we're profit, profiting off of the war hysteria leading up to the war. And they basically mm-hmm. sacrifice the, the planet to make money and to tr- as a way to try to also get control. Like if we destroy the world, then they can come out. And and so there are two opposing military factions, essentially the Enclave and Brotherhood of Steel. And then you okay. got like more like kind of, you know, uh, militia type, you know, mm-hmm. or like mm-hmm. Minutemen. There's literally the Minutemen and the Boston one. In Fall- okay. Fall War. So there's a lot that of different sense. factions there, but in the series, it looks like the Brotherhood of Steel is definitely showing up. I don't know if that means the Enclave is definitely gonna, is going to show up or not, but you're going to have, you know, the Brotherhood of Steel kind of also like bully the general population, you know? Okay. And in, in the game series, they're kind of like, get out of our way, you peons, you know, we're going to come in and take your resources because we need it for our military might. Right. You know? Right. So. They're, they're essentially, they're. The worst part of government. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. um, rivaled only by the best part of government, which creates uh, education, which seemed like the vault had education, a the lot of education. Had, the vault had uh, a thing called uh, the GOAT, which was the uh, generalized, uh, what was it, uh, occupational a- aptitude test, I think is what it is, stands okay. for. But it's like you have to answer these questions, and it's how you do sort of your character development at the beginning of the game of Fallout 3. And okay. so that, the scene that you you were describing where the two guys were bullying the girl, that happens when you're still in the vault of teenage age and you yep. take, they're all getting ready to go take the goat together to find out okay. who, who's going to be a janitor, who's going to be an overseer, who's going to be a teacher, things like that. So Wow. I bet you there was some definitely some nepotism. Oh, probably. Uh, and uh, probably some even some cronyism. Uh, the isms are out there. They Madalano, are. They really right? are. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> We are, uh, we're a couple of minutes left in the okay. show. So, um, you don't know, like, did Fallout, f- did this new one, which I think mm-hmm. is Fallout 4 is the one that we're on right now? 70, is that the new 76 one? is the oh, newest one. 76 yeah. is the newest one. That's yeah. CMMO. Yeah. And mm-hmm. how long has that been out? It's been out for a little over two years now. 
Um, okay. And so, uh, so is there that right? might, and, yeah. and they think, and they don't think it's till uh, 2030 for the next Well, one? they're continuing to put resources into 76. They're like, it, okay. they, they really, it's like a lot of MMOs that will have a season, game seasons. Right. Where you have like a game map that you try to, you know, you, if you go up a hundred levels what, during the season period and you get right. rewards for every level that you go up and there's like a loose storyline, they have really some DLC, which is Find, What's DLC? Uh, downloadable content. And so basically okay. it's in in the MMO world, it's just kind of like, well, here's a new sort of main storyline quest, but it's not that okay. long and it's not that involved. But or it might have a couple of new locations that were not didn't exist before on the map. Okay. Previously in Fallout uh four and Fallout New Vegas, the DLC was radically different and took you to entirely do, new parts of the world essentially of, of America and you got a very different like and some of them were kooky like one of the DLCs you get kidnapped by aliens so you have to battle your way off of an alien spaceship like they okay. get kind of they get fun and weird with it and stuff yeah. the, the DLCs for the MMO for in my opinion have just been kind of underwhelming it's just been kind of like oh that was a storyline that took me 25 minutes to play and that was the whole DLC Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just not as interesting and 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 yeah. engaging as the single player mode was. So, yeah, but fair enough. they're still putting money into it, and yeah, the the next Fallout Five, um, which they have not committed whether or not it's going to be back to single player or not, um, they are shooting at like yeah twenty thirty because they've got these other properties that they're working on too. All right, six years. Yeah, that feels like a long way. Yeah. Um. Well, uh, this has been a very quick hour. Yes, it has. Uh, yeah, I for enjoyed me, for it. me. I don't know about for you or for your listeners, but for me, I think so. I think we, I think we kind of knocked it out. <laughs> and we're, you know, it's like fifty-eight minutes, but yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think we covered so many games and so many different kinds of things. Plus, I got to do anecdotes. You got to do anecdotes. So we we did bits. Things happened. You know, we did a couple. We riffed. So Jackie, it says here that you're married. Uh, what's that like? <laughs> I'm sorry, Byron Allen. Uh, I feel leashed. <laughs> Uh, here's the scoop folks. Uh, I'm talking with Matt Alano Martin. Matt is with one T it's mm -hmm. in, it's in the, um, it's, it's in the notes and it's at M A T A L A N O M A R T I N. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be in Chattanooga, April 19th, the 20th, but he's all over the country all the time. So check out his Instagram. Mm -hmm. He has a, a website that has a lot of dashes in it. So why don't you go to his Instagram? Yeah. And, um, Thank you so much for doing the show. This has been super fun. Yeah, I think it's always nice to catch up with you. It's been, I don't think I've seen you since we did Dr. Grins together, right? Is that the last time we've hung out? I believe so. And yeah. I, and that would have been a year and a half ago. So yeah, I seem yeah. to be on a, a year and a half rotation. Feel free to book me, Dr. Grins. Uh, I'll, talk, I'll, <laughs> Rangers. I'll, I'll talk to Alicia for you. <laughs> okay. You know the rules out there. Take care of each other. Hi, Adal. How was the show? Well, it was with Matt Alano. Martin, except for that, I think there's another name. I always call him Matt Alano, but I think it's Matt Alano Martin. He uh, he's a great comic how out of would, Indiana. How would you spell that? Mutton, Merton. What was that? <laughs> Matt M A T Alano A L A N O Martin M A R T I N. He has three names. Martin. Okay. Martin. There you go. And what and was uh, think, and what uh, was the uh, what was the dorkdom? The topic. Oh, yeah. The, the video game Fallout. Oh, that's a good one. Remember that one? Yes, of course. Who could forget? <laughs> it was, uh, he loves it so much. He, he loved Fallout 3 the best. Actually, okay. he started with Fallout 3. He loved Fallout 4 the best. Oh, uh, oh, interesting. Okay. And then he liked Vegas a lot. And the 1776 is the new massive multiplayer one. Okay. That he got to explain to me that much like a Star Wars fan, he didn't have to like it. Uh, right, right. <laughs> That's right. You can still be a fan and not like everything that comes out. <laughs> right. And still play it two or three hours a day. Right. It's like, it reminds me of being a child and my mom buying the Star Wars bed sheets and window curtains. Yeah. Because I was a fan of Star Wars. And yet, you did not yet, wish for... I did not need those things. I did not need <laughs> Star Wars bed sheets. <laughs> I would have loved those. I don't know why. I think I would have just been able to stare deeply into Chewbacca's eyes and Han Solo and made up more adventures for them. 
and right. with with graphics. You, it turns out, didn't need. I had the action figures. I didn't need the curtains. Right. I didn't have the action figures. Yeah. She she went one step too far. Yeah. So he really. It was interesting though because he was talking about something we had noticed when we had Fallout Three. Yeah. Which was if you make a decision in that first storyline, it affects your journey. That's right. And that was one of the big selling points for that game. It's amazing that that they were able to do that. That was yeah. is that just branching coding? What is that? Yeah, I mean, yes, I mean, it, yes, and no. It's um, it's hidden variables. It's e- easier to do it with hidden variables than with branches. Um, okay. Uh, when you have you have a computer under the hood, so you can basically just like have these little tags or little little variables you can you can you can rake up. Um, right. That when you make a decision, it's like, oh, this is a an evil decision, or this is a decision that helps this per this this faction over here. Then, if you make enough of those, then you can start to go, all right, well, that faction is now going to be more powerful. Right. Or I for- yeah, yeah. You know, I just recorded this with him, and yet I forget because he said in the first one, the the storyline was he uh, his dad had left early, uh, the fallout shelter. And uh, he went out to find him. And his father was an engineer who was working on a water purification system. And spoiler alert on this, uh, he makes it. He finishes it out in the world. Oh, good. But then he has to um, sacrifice himself to keep it from the bad guys. And I was like, who are the bad guys when it comes to a water purification system? But um, well, that's fine. Uh, there's profit and everything if you can, uh, if you can take it over. Right. It's true. It's true. Uh, right. Like the bad guys would control the water, yeah. sort of like Mad Max, right, right. I suppose. And then people have to pay for the water and then they get richer and more powerful. Yeah, I can see it. It's I a good plan. It. It's, a good it's, good e- plan. it's a good evil plan. Right. And then um, the next one, the Vegas one, I guess you could join the factions and some of them are literally evil. And you're like, yes, you can't really justify <laughs> joining that, that <laughs> faction. But okay. But like sure, these, yeah, fine. Right, they're, they're, well, Matt, it's the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. They call themselves evil. They're they don't. Yeah, fine. Right, and then seventeen seventy six. He said doesn't have the good the good storyline because it's got to do this multiplayer thing, and they didn't want to mess with the canon. Right, and they also said uh, that that the the company is not going to come out with the next Fallout game till uh, twenty thirty. Wow. So, All yeah. right. So they're they, they're planning ahead. Right, I think they the same company did Elder Scrolls, and that blew up. Oh yeah, I think so. So, um, um, they have- yeah, and 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 the latest Baldur's Gate took eight, eight years to make. So, oh, people did are it? like, okay, I guess these big games like this can take this long, and people, and it's not, and it's not terrible. Right, and, people are know, sad, but they're in. <laughs> right, right, they're in, and 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 they they don't have time to get bored of the franchise. Right, Matt. Matt said that he re- every time the new one comes out, he replays the fir- three and four. Oh, really? And yeah, and Vegas, and uh, like I guess there's I guess there's four of them. Some right. are named. And the multiplayer some are game will yeah. The multiplayer game will keep the fans occupied for a good long while. Right, they keep adding stuff. He said. Yeah, so, of course. Yeah, um, but uh, I like I like him. Uh, I like Madelano Martin. Oh yeah, who I call Madelano more than anything. And, sure. uh, and so, oh, and, and the reason he wanted to do it is because there's going to be a TV show on Amazon Prime based oh, on, yes. the, on the game. Yes, there is. Yeah. And right. so he. Transmedia. He like, perfect. Perfect. Right. It's a transmedia thing, right? Where there's, there mm-hmm, all mm-hmm. different kinds of things. What's fun about enjoy. that world is that it's, it's, it's got this sort of, you know, 19, Mid-century 1950s sci-fi, like the world was was before the before the nuclear war that destroyed everything. It was a slightly different Earth already, with okay. this sort of like like Americana 1950s sci-fi looking vibe to it. That so it might be that he was like it's perfect timing, and so I asked Matt Alano Martin. If he had a new album or a podcast or something, he's like, nope, just wanted to talk about it. Is that all right? And I was like, it totally about it. is. Yes. That's perfect. Perfect. That is perfect. Dork Forest. Yes. Rangers, you know the rules out there. Take care of each other.
My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh, my God. Thank we you. Why don't we just call that as the end of the show?